Hey, my name is Carly Graves, and I am a first year master's student in the bio and ag engineering department at NC State, and I'm studying under the advisement of Dr. Mahmoud Sharara. So my master's research, very generally, is focused around trying to reduce odors and emissions in broiler houses. And so we know that broiler litter is a very valuable fertilizer source, um, but that it also is a large contributor to odors and greenhouse gas emissions. And so to be able to effectively create odor and emission mitigation strategies, we need to have a baseline um, and understanding of what are the emissions that we're seeing typically in broiler houses. And so that's what this study was kind of just hoping to answer. So if you look under the research questions, we kind of have this hierarchy of learning objectives that we were going by. So again, most basic, we were trying to just understand what are the magnitude of emissions that we're seeing from broiler litter and what are the litter characteristics. Then moving on, we can then compare and contrast emissions between, um, excuse me, compare and, com compare and contrast emissions and litter properties between different farms. Then we can create cause and effect relationships between the properties and emissions, then we, then we will be able to predict emissions from their litter properties, which is really big because, you know, it'd be much easier to just take a litter sample and send it to the lab for analysis than to try and set up and actually measure gaseous emissions. And then lastly, again, this study will just help us to design better emission um, mitigation strategies for broiler litter in general in animal housing. So for this study, we used fresh litter samples from five active broiler houses in North Carolina. Um, the houses were all from different locations. They weren't just houses next to each other. And we were measuring for ammonia, hydrogen sulfide, methane, nitrous oxide, carbon dioxide, as well as VOCs. So the VOCs we put in, we measured that through a GCMS um, and the other emissions we were using through flux sampling. And so moving on to some of our data analysis and results. So we analyzed the litter for a whole bunch of different properties, but these were the six that were most impactful. So we had moisture content, ash content, pH, total carbon, total nitrogen, and the age of the litter. And between those six properties alone, we were able to account for about 75 to 85% of the variability between farms. And you can see from these flux graphs that we did have statistically significant differences between the emissions we were seeing. You can also see from the flux graphs that some gases like nitrous oxide and CO2 had a lot greater variability. Um, so for example, nitrous oxide at its lowest was about 1.5 parts per million highest was about 22 parts per million. So that variability is about, I don't know, an order of 15 times greater. Whereas like ammonia, um, 145 to 100 or 555, only about four times, um, a little less than four times the, the difference between the least and greatest. And so we were also able to put this into a linear regression and come up with table two. So table two shows you the magnitude um, as well as the direction of correlation between these litter properties and the emissions we were seeing. And we did leave hydrogen sulfide out of this because the emissions we were getting were so low and, and there you know, wasn't anything significant to analyze there. But so you can see that moisture content um, and age were very positive predictors across the board. Um, ash content, total carbon, kind of this negative correlation across the board as well. Um, and then we noticed that pH is only significant for ammonia, which our knowledge of this ammonium, ammonia equilibrium, that makes sense. And then you can also see um, in the table below that we have our key volatile organic compounds that were coming out of the litter. So you can see which were present in the gaseous phase, liquid phase, um, and which were odorous. So moving on, what are some of our takeaways from this? Well, for example, if we want to focus on creating a mitigation strategy centered around ammonia, then we know that it would be most helpful if we can find a way to decrease the moisture content, decrease that pH, and obviously the age of the litter is a significant factor as well. But we can basically just kind of interpret this table and these relationships 
to help us design odor mitigation strategies going forward. And of course, again, we still have about 15 to 25% of this variability unexplained. Um, so, you know, worth looking into further to see are those differences in um, litter management strategies that farmers are already using. Are they applying something already that we, that we weren't aware of? Um, are they, how often are they clearing their house out? Things like that. Um, but yeah, so we're looking forward to taking this data, moving forward and trying to design a product to um, achieve low, reduced emissions all across the board, greenhouse gas and odorous emissions. Thank you.